Hello, and welcome to a figure review of the Bring Arts Cloud Strife Another Form variant. Uh, so, I've had this sitting on uh, on my desk for a while now, but I thought it's about time to open it up. Uh, so, this is actually my first Bring Arts figure. Now, I do have one Play Arts Kai, which is kind of the bigger version of this. Uh, Play, uh, bring art, as you can tell, is it's a little bit smaller scale. It's more kind of like Marvel Legends or whatever scale, so about six inch. Um, and yeah, this is the Cloud version. The features in Kingdom Hearts One and Rechain of Memories, I guess, and maybe the GBA version of Chain of Memories. So we're gonna have a quick look at the box. Also, this is the Square Enix exclusive edition. I'll explain what that is in a second, but there might be a hint of an item that's nearby that sticker. Uh, so we'll take a look at the box. The box is really nice, actually. On one side we've got just the name of the figure and stuff. On the other we've got a very artistic rendition of uh, Cloud there. And on the back, as with a lot of figure kind of things, we've got examples of the poses you can pull off. There he is doing a slash, there he is like dashing, uh, there he is preparing for battle. And there he is with his one wing, kind of looking away. Um, yeah, so there's not much more to say about this. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and we'll take a look at exactly what's inside. So BRB. Okay, I have opened it up and taken a look inside. Uh, and honestly, there's, there's more stuff in here than I was expecting, which is always good. So I'm going to go quickly go through all of the little items. So... First off, we have the stand. This is pretty standard with um, most Japanese figures, really. You've got those, you've got the little peg holes, so you can change up the angle of this, obviously. This attaches there. Um, and this comes off this head here, as you can see. Uh, and this obviously opens up, if I'm correct, there we go. And that will hold the figure. Uh, and there's also an alternative head, which is like smaller, um, I guess, if you want. I don't know, really. This is the uh, this is a bit of a strange one because it's it's just a smaller head, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe there's there's uses of it. And of course, then we have the figure. So I've not put him on the stand yet because uh, I kind of mess about with him and take a look. But we'll take a look at the figure detailing first. So as always, we'll begin from the bottom and work our way up. Also, something. Sorry, I just noticed as well. This box there, as you can see at the back, uh, and, well, and the bottom there. This mentioned this is a Final Fantasy figure. Now, technically they're not wrong, because this is Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII, but this is the Kingdom Hearts, like, version of him. So, it's kind of weird in that I would put this as a Kingdom Hearts figure, not really Final Fantasy, because you never see this in a Final Fantasy game. As far as I'm aware, unless maybe he appeared in like Duodecim or something, I don't know. Anyway, let's get on to the figure. So, the boots are very nice, and uh, Tetsuya Nomura themed, and talking about that, we've got the belts on his legs. Uh, I mean, that's, that's another thing, uh, Nomura loves belts and kind of slightly edgy, strange designs. Then we move up to uh, his kind of thigh area, I guess. Uh, we've got a little bit of like, I don't know, armour on that side or whatever. We've got another belt there, of course. We've got lots of belts there because, I don't know. I Honestly, I wouldn't like to be a Tetsuya Nomura uh, character because it must take an age to get into your clothes every day and out. Um, we've got his left hand here, the gauntlet and stuff. It's got some spikes and whatnot on it. It's got some more belts, it's got his pauldron, of course, uh, there, and, oh, okay, the pauldron, like, moves separate, I guess. That makes sense. And his other arm is a bit more standard, he's got a kind of, um, I forgot what they're called now, but he's he's got a wrist guard, as it were, there. Uh, as you can see, these are both closed fists, we'll get onto his fist options in a second, that is not a phrase I would like to say many times, uh, and then we'll go around the back, I think, to look at the bottom of his uh, of his cape. So it is one moulded piece, but it can move, which is very good, obviously, because if you want to pose him in dynamic rays, you don't want this being static. And we've got the, like, shoulder wrap of the rest of his cloak. I mean, this is clearly a Vincent Valentine-inspired kind of touch, I think, which is pretty cool. 
I do love me Vincent. Um, in fact, the, the Play Arts Kai figure I mentioned is Vincent Valentine from Advent Children, so I'm kind of a big fan. Uh, and we move up to his head. Now, his head is obviously covered, but it is fully modelled and stuff. We got his very spiky hair because he is a spiky head boy. Also, the, the paint apps on this cape are delightful. They're kind of the right level of, like, dark in places to really add some depth and stuff. It is lovely. And I just realised, actually, his arm has, like, a separate piece, but, you know, it still sinks up. It's very nice. And, of course, we have the one wing. Look at that. That is very nice. Like, it, ooh, ooh, that's got, like, a blue effect to it. That's really cool, and, like, it slightly changes depending on where the light is. That is great. Um, right. And they put him in a more neutral thing. And hope he stands without the stand. Okay, let's leave him like that for now. Sorry about that. Um, right, so next up we have a cape piece. Now some of you may be a bit confused why we have extra cape. And I'm pretty sure it's to make up for the wings. So I think you can take that wing off and you can put this on and make it more of a comprehensive cape round the back, if that makes sense. So. Obviously you're going to try that in the photos coming up in a second. Of course we also have his hand pieces. So as you can see, um, these are his left hands here because these are the gauntlet kind of ones. We've got the open kind of uh, attacking kind of uh, one. And we have a more closed one. I mean, admittedly, there's not a great deal of difference. Ah, and that keeps falling off for some reason. And then we have his right hand. So his right hand is basically a version of this. And then we have the very important one, which is the Buster Sword holding hand. As you can see, there is a hole going through there. That is where the Buster Sword will go. Uh, that's probably going to be one of the most useful hands to have, I presume. Um, I'm talking about the Buster Sword, actually. I almost left that out. We have it in all its bandaged glory. Why did Cloud wrap his Buster Sword in bandages? Tetsuya and Nomura, that's why. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the detailing is great. It is obviously his Buster Sword. The bandages look kind of strange, but kind of cool. It gives me a bleach vibe as well. It looks a lot like um, uh, Ichigo Zanpakuto when it's, uh, when it's wrapped and stuff. I, I don't know where it is, but I do like bandaged weapons they make no sense but they do look aesthetically pretty pleasing so i i do like that even though it's silly and of course the piece de resistance and this is what makes this the square enix exclusive version we have cloud but he's closing his eyes um i'm not gonna lie when i bought this i bought this a while ago when it was on sale on the square enix europe store um, there was two listings. There was this, and then there was the regular non-limited version. And the price difference was, I think, like £1 or £1.50. So I sprung for it just because, like, look, I'm probably never going to display him with this head. But just in case in the future one day I do come up with a pose or a display with other figures that I want to do. Eh, for one fifty, is it worth it for this head? I don't know. Um... But, you know, it's the limited version. I thought, I'm only ever going to find it on the Square Enix store, so why not? Uh, anyway, I'll stop rambling now. So, as is standard with my figure reviews, I'm now going to go mess about with this figure and put him in different poses and configurations with all these pieces. And I'm going to take some photos and put it to some music. Um, so, that is what is going to happen for the next, like, 30 seconds or something. So, enjoy this montage of the various poses that I've pulled off with Cloud Strife, another form v variant. Biobi. Okay, I am back, and honestly, I'm just going to say this up top, I probably had more fun taking photos of this figure than I have 
pretty much most of the figures I've done. Um, this, ah, oh, he's just so, he's so like photogenic and poseable. I'll get into that in a second. Um, but first up, uh, as a figure itself, I think this is a really, really solid figure. Uh, he's got a, a decent amount of range of like articulation. Maybe just a little bit, his shoulders could do with a little bit more. Uh, and also, one thing that mildly bothers me, I'm going to get the downsides out of the way first, is the the joint between the like gloved hand and the arm is very small, and if you want him to do, and you probably have seen this in some of my photos, with the arm behind his back kind of pose, with the sword, you know, behind him, it looks a bit weird, it looks like he's like snapping his like wrist in a really awkward position. But I mean, that's, that's how figures go, really, unfortunately. There's only, you know, certain levels you can do it. Um, also, he is mildly lanky, and this is in keeping with the Kingdom Hearts uh, aesthetic. Everyone's kind of lanky with big feet and whatever. So it kind of makes sense, but I mean, he, he looks a little bit awkward there. I, I don't quite have his legs right, but it, it, it's vaguely in the same thing. Uh, but th those are my big criticisms of it, those are the things I noticed. Also, kind of with a lot of figures, and I think play arts and bring arts especially suffer a bit from it, the hands do drop off a little bit and you really have to push them in to, you know, really keep them stick, you know, make them stick, but I've not really had much issue with it. The head, the taking off the head was a lot easier than I expected, actually. I did swap it out for the, uh, for the closed-eyed version for one shot, as you guys saw. And that was fine, but, um, you know, it, it's, it, I'm not going to be switching the head out a lot anyway. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that's the downside, maybe, and I guess you could criticise, there's one or two of these hands you're probably never going to use. Like, the closed fists ones, I see that they're there, but I don't know why you'd ever display a figure with such a range of hands and things to hold with closed fists. But whatever, I'm kind of getting off topic now. Because there are so much, there's so much good going on with this. So A, as I said, the, the, the posability is pretty good. I think I got him in some pretty decent poses. I tried to pull off that one in particular. It kind of went well. I think it was alright. I think it looked okay in the end, but, you know, it wasn't... It, it, it's never as good as those pictures because they've got, you know, sort of editing on them and stuff. But as, you know, a plain photo, I think it turned out pretty well. And as I said, I, I don't know what it is about this figure exactly, but like every every angle I was putting him in, or like, you know, kind of lowering the camera a bit, hiring it, you know, turning it a little bit, every time I kind of just hit on these really epic looking poses. Um, and I know th the aesthetic's not for everyone. There's going to be lots of people who think he's far too edgy and way too over-designed. I absolutely understand that. Honestly, this look, uh, it, it took a little bit to really, you know, to, to get me to like it, to be honest. But, no, I kind of love it. Um, because it is so over the top. As I mentioned, Vincent Valentine is one of my favourite. I love they incorporated his cape into it. And uh, honestly, he is a figure that's pretty effortless to pose in a pretty nice way. I mean... You know, don't get me wrong, I, I took a good minute or two to really get this, you know, to work out what the legs would actually be doing and stuff. And, you know, th this isn't some, like, high-level thing, obviously. I'm sure a lot of people, you know, viewing this will probably think, wow, that's an average to below average pose. But, you know, I, I like it. This is how I'm going to have him on my shelf, at least for now. I am probably going to change it up a little bit because, as I say, he is very poseable. I really like the addition of this extra bit of cape, so as you saw, I, I did that for a few photos as well. The wing uh, takes a little bit to detach, unfortunately. It is like, the connection piece is quite long, so you've really got to pull, um, but you know, obviously be careful with it. Um, but honestly, when this is on, it just makes it look like a full cape, and um, even though these are two hard modelled pieces, you can, you really do get a dynamic look, like whatever angle you do. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, honestly, this figure is just really cool. 
it's absolutely a kind of niche, I suppose. The only people that are going to buy this are the ones that really like the another version uh, of Cloud. But I, oh man, it is just cool. It's it's such fun to look at because you can pull off such edgy and like sort of anime trope poses that it's just it's a load of fun, honestly. Uh, and I kind of I picked up, and I don't know. This is probably intentional. I did kind of pick up the duality of the figure, if that makes sense. As in, this side is, you know, the cloud you know. He's got the buster sword. He, he, okay, he's got someone else's cape on. But, you know, th that's kind of like, that. that is cloud. But this side is all the, like, dark and edgy things. And honestly, you can probably have a lot of fun with that. You can, you know, display him just the dark, edgy side, or the light side, or, you know, a mix of both or whatever. Yeah, I... Honestly, this has just been a ton of fun. Um, you know, a lot of figures I enjoy posing and stuff, but a lot of them, once I've decided on a pose, it's very unlikely I'm going to change it up. This guy, I can see myself kind of every month or two maybe taking off his Buster Sword and having him do his, like, evil poses or maybe his heroic poses and taking the wing off forever. It's the, the, There's a lot of variety going on with such a small amount of extras because, I mean, ultimately... You've got these three things. Um, also, just a heads up, it is a little bit finicky to get the stand on because the cape is kind of in the way. And when you put the stand on, the cape is basically always in that pose. You can't you can't really push it back any because this is directly in the way. So I don't think you could have this on and this piece unless you kind of split it like that. And leave his body kind of obscure the fact that there's a massive split in his cape. But you know, it, it, it's simple enough. But honestly, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now and I'm going to wrap this up before I start gushing again. But honestly, this is a really cool figure. Now, I'm pretty sure I got him for around £60. I think that's roughly $80, maybe a little bit less. I got him on the Square Enix store. I'll try and leave a link below if you guys want to get one yourselves. Um, Square Enix store does sometimes have sales and stuff as well, so it's not, you know, it, it, it's pretty decent. I think for the price, it's definitely worth it for me. Um, this is leagues better than like a Marvel Legends or wherever you'd get for, you know, a, a quarter of the price or a third of the price, but you get so much more that it really is worth it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this review and the pictures. Uh, as I said, I, I had more inspiration for the pictures in this than a lot of other figure reviews, and that's not saying the other figures are bad, but this is just like that level more. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking of buying some more Bring Arts now, maybe some more Kingdom Hearts stuff, because I really got into Kingdom Hearts recently. But yeah, that about wraps it up. Let me know if you guys have this one, or any other Bring Arts, you know, let me know if they're worth getting into. I've heard this Dragon Quest stuff, and I've been in Dragon Quest, but... There's a decently wide variety, so who knows, in the future I might be putting up some more videos. I'm talking about more videos, I'll be putting this as part of a playlist, so I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video if you guys want to see some more figure reviews, and like one of those random ones that YouTube decides, what could it be? Oh, who, who knows? Um, yeah, and that about wraps it up. Thank you guys very much for watching, and until next time, I will never be just a memory.